All right, we've been working our way through path and line integrals. And last time I talked about calculation of work, uh, flow integral, and circulation. And I did briefly mention flux in the plane, but I thought it was a little bit rushed, so I wanted to revisit it a bit today. OK? So, you know, I was running out of time in the previous lecture. I just wanted to um, revisit it to, to give you a, 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 a bit more time on it. So that's what we're going to look at today, flux in the plane. So let's just um, rejig our memory. Um, flux has interesting applications to fluid flow. Your vector field might be, say, the velocity field of a fluid. And Suppose we've got a, a, a region that's sort of bounded or enclosed by a smooth curve. What the flux enables us to calculate is the rate at which fluid enters or leaves um, that, that region. OK, so suppose I've got a smooth closed curve, C, like a loop, a circle, uh, an ellipse or something like this, and I've got some vector field f with continuous component functions of two variables. Now the n here is an outward pointing unit normal vector. And the flux of the vector field across the sort of boundary or the curve C is just this line integral. So essentially, you say this is your curve. At each point, you're going to have, say, a unit normal to the curve. Oh, actually, that doesn't look like a unit normal. Um, let, let that be f then. OK, that's your f. Say, that's your unit normal. And you can draw a little triangle. And you can speak of that distance there. OK, that distance there is just this dot product. So what we do is we integrate that, that dot product, which is going to be a function, around the curve. OK? Now, sometimes when we're dealing with closed curves, we use the sort of this little circle notation to make sure that uh, we know that we're integrating over a closed curve here. OK, well, you can see in that description that the un outward pointing unit normal vector is important for this calculation. So, I talked a little bit about how to compute an outward pointing normal to a curve. And with this method here, using the cross product involving the k vector, it is sensitive to the sort of the direction of your parameterization. So here, t is a unit vector, unit tangent vector. All you really need to do if you want to compute, say, an outward pointing unit normal vector, well, you describe the curve C, say, using a vector function, R. Calculate its tangent vector by computing the derivative. Normalize it, make it have, have um, length 1, and then take the cross product. Now. In the first case, we've got our clockwise motion going on. So um, as our parameterization t increases in our parameterization, the sort of the, the curve swept out in a clockwise motion. So in that case, the flux would be given by the following. OK? 
Okay, now if I write this out in terms of my parameterization, it's this. And using n hat, well, n hat is just this cross product. And the ds, of course, remember, is the um, arc length element, which, which can be written like this. Okay, so you can see now, hopefully, that you can cancel off here and here. And this would be, this would be the thing that you're actually working with, the k cross r prime. Okay, so if you use this um, uh, tangent vector in terms of this derivative divided by its length, then this actually simplifies quite a bit. Okay? Now for the case down here where you have the, the anti-clockwise or the um, counterclockwise uh, motion or rotation. Well, it, it's essentially uh, you just reverse the order in here. Okay, so instead of k cross t hat, we would have t hat cross k. and you'll get the cancellation. Okay? Now, to sort of even drive the, the orientation home a bit further, sometimes what we do is we put little arrows in our integral signs. Okay, so here we want clockwise rotation, so we put a little arrow pointing sort of in a, to, to indicate the clockwise um, motion. Here we would do it the other way. Okay, okay well I did an example using um, this, and then I actually said, well, if my orientation, if my curve is swept out in an anti-clockwise direction, then I can use the following possibly simpler um, uh, uh, line integral setup. Okay, and I, I, I listed this as an independent, independent ex, uh, learning exercise. Solve the previous example using this method here. So I wanted to discuss that. I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that to show you um, uh, how to do that, okay? So you might want to put your solution just down here and then just compare it with what I did at the end of yesterday's lecture. So I'm just going to put mine here. Okay, so we want to calculate the flux of this vector field across this circle. Okay, so this is a circle with radius 2 and center at the origin. And if I'm going to use this, this setup here, I want to parameterize my circle in, in the right way, in the right direction. Okay? Now the standard parameterization 2 cosine t comma 2 sine t will, will, will give you the, the, the correct rotation for using um, this result down here. Okay, so let's parameterize C in the anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction. By the following. Oh, two. Okay, so 
as t increases, we would sort of travel in an anti-clockwise direction around that, that curve C. Okay, well, essentially here, our parameterization component functions are just 2 cosine t, 2 sine t. So, in the setting of this result up here, M's going to be this function here. N's going to be this X function here. So what we want to do is just calculate these sort of differentials and evaluate M and N along the curve and then just do this integration. Okay? So you can, you can also, of course, think of this as you know, 2 cosine ti plus 2 sine tj. Okay. So think of our parameterization. Right. This refers to the x points, this refers to the, or the x component, this refers to the y component. To compute these differentials, dx and dy, all I want to do is take the differentials up here and put them in um, and calculate them with, with, with uh, some sort of differential dt. Okay, so if I take the differential here, the dx is just going to be minus 2 sine t dt. From, from x equals 2 cosine t, and from y equals 2 sine t, dy is going to be something like 2 cosine t dt. Yes? Okay, so the last thing we want to do is evaluate m and n along our parameterization. Okay, so... So along our curve C, let's just take M, M to be X minus Y and replace X with 2 cosine T and Y with 2 sine T. So I'm going to get X minus Y, which is going to be 2 cosine T minus 2 sine T. Let's evaluate n along our parameterization, n's just x, so that's going to be 2 cosine t. And let's put it all together and use this now. Okay. So this then is just, our limits of integration are going to be 0 and 2 pi. M is just that along our curve. dy is that. So dy is that there. Okay. Minus n times the differential dx. So n is 2 cosine t, and we calculated dx to be minus 2 sine t, dt. Okay, so it's a bit of a mess down here in the right-hand corner, but what I'm going to do is group all the, take all the dt's out, and then I'm going to just form a regular integral. So you can see when I expand this, um, I'm going to get a little bit of cancellation. Okay, so um, essentially the mixed sines and cosines will disappear and I'll get the following. I'll get something like 4 cosine squared dt. Now, integrate cosine squared t. Well, you can do a number of things. You can do a double angle formula or you can be a little bit crafty and notice that the integration is just from 0 to 2 pi. So the length of the interval of integration is 2 pi here. So does anyone know what the, what the value of the integral of cosine squared t is from 
Say 0 to 2 pi? No, not 0. It's squared, remember? Cosine, certainly cosine 0, because the, but this is cosine squared is always non-negative. So you're not going to get a negative area. Close though, pi, okay? So if you integrate cosine squared from 0 to 2 pi, it's just pi. So the answer will be 4 pi. If you want to put down the double angle formula, that's fine. No worries if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, what does it mean though? What does our answer mean? Well, first of all, let's look at the sign of our answer. It's positive. If f represented the, say, velocity field of a fluid, then this 4 pi would, the positive 4 pi would indicate a net outflow over C or out of that, that bounded region, that, that disk. Okay, a net outflow, a positive outflow. If it was a negative answer, you would have a net inflow into the um, region. 